Hello everyone, and I am speaking from Guildford in the UK. Um, one of the gynecology laparoscopic fellows, and I have been doing laparoscopy for the last uh, 10 years, so I would be welcoming all your questions in the end. So laparoscopy in pregnancy, it's a very interesting topic because even 20, even 10 years ago, lots of surgeons considered laparoscopy in pregnancy is unsafe. Um, because they were worried that they can cause fetal loss and damage uterine artery. Because we've become much more experienced and we have very advanced techniques now, and, and the anesthetists are providing a very safe anesthetic for us nowadays, laparoscopy is pregnant, in pregnancy is quite safe and actually is preferred method of doing surgery in pregnancy, if it's possible. Now, uh, there are conditions that can require laparoscopy in pregnancy. Some of them are non-pregnancy related and the most common conditions are cholelithiasis and appendicitis. Um, approximately one in 500 and all, uh, to one in 600 women would require a surgical surgery du during pregnancy and these two conditions would be majority of um, uh, that would need surgical opinion. Now, gynecological causes would include persistent ovarian cysts, and the reason um, in pregnancy you can get ovarian cysts in pregnancy is because when pregnancy happens, then the follicular cyst or normal follicle, follicle becomes a corpus luteum cyst and can um, be quite a can reach quite a big size. I have seen a size up to 20 centimeters in pregnancy. And because this cyst will support pregnancy, it's very important for us not to disturb it unless it's actually putting mother at risk. Now, adnexal torsion is common because cysts are common in pregnancy. And ectopic pregnancy is one of the most common operation, um, condition we do our laparoscopy. It's one of the um, what we call bread and butter um, conditions that every trainee, every junior doctor needs to know how to exclude and how to make sure we don't miss these conditions. Now, what is very different in pregnancy. I want to just mention to you a couple of anatomical considerations. If you can see on my picture, there is pubic symphysis um, um, down below, and then umbilicus, and there is xiphysternum. These are landmarks that I will be um, mentioning in my pictures. So when you have a first trimester, first three months of pregnancy, the uterus is actually quite well hidden behind the pubic symphysis. Up to 14 weeks size, the uterus stays inside. So you can see the anatomy is not really that disturbed. And also it's quite safe in trauma, for example. And you can see where I put my mark. It's Mark Bernays point. It's a usual point where appendix will be located in pregnancy. Now, once pregnancy is a little bit more advanced in a second trimester, then it enlarges up to umbilicus and at 20 weeks roughly the uterus would be up to umbilicus. You can see my second mark uh, where I put my second mark. This is where the appendix is located. So it's much more different um, and much more difficult to find it and people, um, clinicians if they don't know anatomical changes they might not be able to look for appendix in the right place. Now if we get to uh, more advanced pregnancy in the last trimester, you can see the uterus enlarges. This is a 36 weeks pregnant uterus, and it's usually halfway between xiphysternum and umbilicus. And can you see where my third mark is? This is where appendix lo is located in the last trimester. So the pain might be not even in the pelvis or on the sides. It could be really up um, sort of upper quadrant, right upper quadrant, so it's very easy to miss. The other important consideration is that in pregnancy, the physiology of pregnancy uh, causes or produces elevated white cell count. So if you would base your diagnosis on pregnant, on non-pregnant ladies where you would be looking at the white cell count, in pregnancy, a white cell count of 15 is not unusual, especially if 
ladies have been vomiting in pregnancy, i.e. had hyperemesis gravidarum. Now, C-reactive protein is also raised in pregnancy, so it's not the main uh, parameter that you would be basing your diagnosis. Other things would be uh, important. You get dilutional anemia because the volume, blood volume or plasma volume is increased in pregnancy, so hemoglobin drops and ladies can get low blood pressure. Now, all of these anatomical and physiological considerations would lead to delayed diagnosis. So it's very important, number one, to uh, have a joint opinion. So if gynecologist suspects a surgical pathology, we usually invite surgeons and we sit down and actually consider all the possibilities. And m we need to make sure we don't miss the diagnosis. And of course, our main principles are to minimize fetal risks without compromising safety of the mother. What I'm basically saying is that we're very conservative in pregnancy. We try not to do surgery. However, we know that delayed diagnosis and ruptured appendix, for example, increases mortality. So we need to always remember that. So is it safe? Yes, there have been lots of studies, and they showed that hemodynamic changes are the same during laparoscopy as in non-pregnant women. So there's no difference whatsoever. And complications are not related to laparoscopy itself or anesthetic, but they're related to underlying pathology, and it's completely independent of, of the type of operation. Um, just want to mention here that 1.5% uh, fetal loss um, or miscarriage is um, uh, that's the data, show, data shows us that you can get up to 1.5% fetal loss in acute appendicitis, but when it's ruptured, um, then the miscarriage rate goes up to 35%. And you can see if you get a complication of gallstones like pancreatitis, the miscarriage might be as high as 60%. Now, what's interesting that in second trimester, it, it is recommended to use open laparoscopy. And if you saw my pictures earlier, open laparoscopy, it, which m means that all the layers are open on the direct vision to actually get inside of the abdomen, which is called Hasson entry. If you um, have noticed that gynecologists don't use this entry very often, they usually use a varus needle. And because the uterus is quite large, we feel that it might be a risk of introducing a various needle into the uterus and infusing uterus with CO2. And in third trimester, because of the position of the uterus, open surgery, not laparoscopy, is recommended. And I just want to show you a little diagram. On your right, this is a various needle which is commonly used by um, gynecologist, and you can see how the tip of the needle might be very close to the uterus. And on the left, there's a video of Hasson entry where you can actually see all the layers under direct vision. And here uh, at the moment, the surgeon is exposing the rectus shift, placing sutures in the rectus shift, lifting the, the rectus shift and making an incision very safely or putting a, a needle safely and then infusing the abdomen uh, either through this needle or under direct vision and, and then placing a non-sharp trocar. Now, I'm coming now to the most common operation that we do in pregnancy, which is ectopic pregnancy. And ectopic pregnancy basically means it's a pregnancy not in the right place. Most common place, of course, it's a tube. Now, there are two operations that been, has been proposed and been um, done for ectopic pregnancy. One is called salpingotomy, where you just make an incision in the tube um, and just remove the pregnancy without taking the tube away. In that way, you can conserve the tube, and it can be an advantageous in cases where the other tube is damaged or if ladies had fertility problems. 